the Royal College Challenge. Asking the questions, Simon Wesley. Today we have a standoff between two of the most prestigious institutions in London, it says here, the Royal College of GPs and the Royal College of Psychiatrists. Unfortunately, they didn't turn up. So instead, we have the Royal College of Physicians and the Royal College of Surgeons of England. And to introduce their teams, can I first of all ask you, Bod, to introduce your team? Hello everybody, I'm Andrew Goddard. Uh, I'm President of the Royal College of Physicians and a gastroenterologist in Derby. And I'm gonna start with Rose. I'm Rose Penfold, I'm a Geriatrics and General Medicine trainee in South London and a trainee representative for the Royal College of Physicians. And then Raghu. Raghu Ramanathakrishnan, I'm a respiratory physician in Cheltenham and an elected councillor for the RCP. And finally, Alexis. Hi, I'm Alexis Payton, I'm chair of the Committee of Ethical Issues in Medicine for the Royal College of Physicians and the director of the Centre for Health and Society at Aston University. Thank you very much. Now, normally at this point, we then say what the average age of the team is, but that would be rather unfair, so we won't do that. And so, Neil, can you now introduce your team? Yes, hi there, Neil Mortensen. I'm president of the Royal College of Surgeons of England and a colorectal surgeon by training. And I'm going to hand over to Oliver. Hello, my name's Oliver Adibayo. I'm the president of the British Orthopaedic Trainees Association and an orthopaedic registrar in North East London. And then Farah. Hello, I'm Farah Batty. I'm a cardiac surgeon and teach at Swansea University and I'm a council member at the Royal College of Surgeons of England. And then Tim. Uh, I'm Tim Goodacre. I'm vice president of the Royal College of Surgeons of England and a plastic surgeon from Oxford. Thank you very much. And I think congratulations are due to both Ragu and Farah. For both, you both got honours, have you not, just recently? Thank you, congratulations. And commiserations for Tim, who is a Spurs fan. <laughs> Good. <laughs> now, by now, you must know the rules. Start questions for 10, your answers are on the buzzer, bonus question you then confer. If you, if you uh, buzz too early and guess it wrong, you lose five points. In keeping with the tradition, we're going to start the show as we do. With the gong. Oh, what a lovely sound. You start for 10. Who is the patron saint of medicine? Anantha Krishna. Luke. Pardon? Luke. Yes, Luke, good. It's uh, going to have questions on hospitals in the top 100 according to Newsweek. Don't argue with the order. I didn't make it. This is Newsweek's 2001 ratings of the top hospitals. So, first of all, easy one. What is the world's best hospital according to Newsweek? Mayo. Yeah. Yeah, let's go for that. Yes, yeah, the mayor. Yes, well done. It is the mayor. It may not be, but that's what I was going to say. Okay. Okay, next one. Now, the hospital rank number seven um, is named after King Charles, but it's King Charles the 13th, so it's not one of ours, obviously. And to get the answer, all you have to do is translate the name King Charles into one European language. <laughs> Ragu. Charles Leroy. Uh, no. It's got to be the name of a hospital that's the number seven. It's Charles the 13th is Carol in Swedish, so it's the Karolinska. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, we'd agree that's good. Yes, that was set up in 1810 as a hospital for military surgeons. It was decided that they needed more training, something that I believe, Neil, you're all still working on. All right, bonus, uh, another one. Now, the UK doesn't appear until 44 in the list. Remember, this is Newsweek. Which is our best hospital according to Newsweek? Might be the JR. Yeah, guys. Where do you want to go? Great Ormond Street. Great Ormond Street. No, I don't think that's in the list at all, actually. It's St. Thomas's. Now, I know you all roll your eyes, and I, don't, I know exactly what you mean. You see, for those watching, is at 48. OK. Remember, this is not us, this is Newsweek, so blame them. OK, so starter again for everybody. Um, I'll accept a, a year for this one, I, two, one year either way. Um, what is officially considered the official birthday of the internet? Adebayo. Who was that? Oh, Oliver. It is 1991. Now, how many years did I say either way? One. One either way. So now I'm afraid it goes to the physicians. So it must be. <laughs> 89. 89. 1989? No, it's 19, 1983. 1983. Okay. It's the change from network control protocol to transmission control pro protocol and internet protocol that made it all happen. If you have a clue what that means, you're a better person than I am. But, uh, so we'll come back to internet questions in a second. So let's have another starter. So, which actor 
had an early success in 2006. He played Brian Jackson, the university student who cheated at University Challenge. Hayton. Uh, James McAvoy. Very good. Excellent. Well done. OK. Um, a really strong cast. Can you remember any, anyone else in the cast? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, OK, well, that's all right. Fine. <laughs> Did, it's a good Bam movie, though. Mark Gatiss <laughs> played Bamba Gaskell. Oh, yeah, Benedict Benedict Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch is in yeah. Lindsay yeah. Duncan uh, and uh, James Corden also appear. So a big cast. Right, so three more computing questions then. Back to the internet. What does HTML stand for? Hypertext model language. We have to have a go. Yeah. So we're going hypertext. We're going to go machine language. Markup. Hard luck. Uh, <laughs> Close. Uh -huh. What does URL stand for? Regional locator. Yeah. Yeah. Unique regional locator. Universal resource locator. Surgeons had that right, I think, didn't you? I could hear you. Yeah, hard luck. And on Twitter, tweets were originally limited to 140 characters. This changed in 2007. What is the limit now? You think 280? 250? 280? 241? No, 280. Oh! <laughs> They got it right again, didn't you? Yeah, hard luck. Come on, you've got to get a starter there. So let's see how you do with this one. Who wrote the best-selling novel and then TV show Doctor in the House? Good acre. Richard Gordon. Yep, well done. Hooray, you're off. <laughs> Good. Right, so three questions on Doctor in the House. First of all, um, Simon Sparrow was the Doctor in the House. Who played him? Dirk Bogart. Yep. James Robertson Justice was the actor who played which character? Sir, Sir Lancelot Spratt. Yes, that's true. I'm thinking bombastic, arrogant, uh, scary surgeon. I'm sure we don't have any of them anymore. OK. <laughs> and Richard Gordon was a pseudonym. Name either his real name or what was his real college? He was Gordon O'Sleary and he was from uh, Guy's. Uh, no, I meant the Royal College, actually, but it's OK. Oh, sorry. OK. Yeah. Right. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, what was he? Do you know what his profession? Uh, he was an anaesthetist. He was indeed, yes. Yeah. He was very proud of the fact that uh, his uh, medical student textbook had the best index in the world, and it did, and it had an entry called Blue Patient Turning, <laughs> which I still think is just the best ever. OK, good, so, and we're neck and neck at this point. Start of a 10. Which fictional nobleman's name is associated with factitious symptoms? Penfold. Or someone from over there, I think. In fact, three of you went up, so, Rose. Um, Munchausen. Yeah, Baron von Munchausen. Created by Rudolf Eric Rasp in 1785. <laughs> so, three more eponymous diseases, OK? Which aristocratic surgeon at the Hotel Dieu is um, named a Palmer nodular disorder? Dupuytron? Yeah, that's okay. Dupuytron. Uh, Dupuytron? Yep, and Guillaume Dupuytron. Um, this American surgeon, whilst working as a surgeon on the Western Front in October 1918, tragically failed to save the life of the son of William Osler, uh, Revere Osler. Uh, which endocrine condition still bears his name? Ameri American. American, yep. Con. Con. I'm sorry? Con. No, it's no. Harvey Cushing. Oh, Cushing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very poor. OK. <laughs> and um, finally, not many diseases are named after patients, but this one is. It's an infant clotting disorder, factor IX deficiency. No, that's, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's like the other, yeah, acquired hemophilia. I'll take the yeah, surname if you don't yeah. know the Christian name. Yeah, yeah. Christmas? Yes. Yeah. Stephen Christmas, 1952, was the patient. There we are. OK. All right, then. So, another starter. Jed Mercurio was once an RAF doctor, world famous for line of duty. But name either of the two series that he first wrote. God, OK, Andrew. Uh, cardiac Arrest. OK, what was the other? Uh, well, the medical ones. Yeah. Uh, Remember? No, no, Bodies. Bodies, yeah, yeah, Bodies, very good. OK, so a little bit on TV. So, George Clooney played which character in ER? I'm going to hate myself. <laughs> the rest of them are going to hate you, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, so no, no, it's gone. No one, no? No, OK. Do you know, by the way, anyone? OK, Douglas, Doug Ross, Dr. Doug Ross, OK. My wife will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, yes, OK. Now then, if you draw a line between the Royal College of Surgeons and the Royal College of Physicians, you pass through Doughty Street. 
That's true, okay? Why might George Clooney be hanging around number 39? Number 39, Doughty Street. Is it the Garrett Club? No, it's called 39 Doughty Street. No, okay. It's the chambers of his wife, Amal Clooney. So, so yeah, you got that again, didn't you? Yes, <laughs> I could hear. Okay, it's Amal Clooney's sur okay. <laughs> surgery. Chambers. Finally, right, listen to this one then. Dr. Drake Remore is a fictional doctor in a fictional soap written within a fictional comedy. Who plays the character who in turn plays Dr. Drake Remore? Yes. Yeah. Matt LeBlanc. Yeah, Matt LeBlanc, who plays Joe Tribbiani, who plays Drake Remore. It's all very meta, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> in the days of our life. Okay. Okay, right, another starter. Mary Mallon was a cook in New York City. Between 1900 and 1907, she worked for eight different families. She remained well, but seven of the eight families developed which infectious diseases? Goodacre. Tim, okay. Yeah. Typhoid Mary. Typhoid Mary, yes. He was called, so the answer is typhoid, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. In those days, um, I looked this up actually, Jarma named her in 1904. They called her, quote, Malin, an Irish woman of 40 years old, tall, heavy and single. Well, there you, go. you wouldn't get away with that now, would you? No. So let's see how you do on plagues. Okay, <laughs> so plagues, right. First of all, Albert Camus is the author of the best-known novel about the plague, La Peste. What professional sport did he play? We're going to say soccer, football. Yes, very good. Yeah. Do you know what position he played? Uh, uh, no. no. Okay. <laughs> he was the goalkeeper. It's often the question about goalkeepers, yeah. He actually said, all I know about morality and obligation I owe to football. Right then, name the Derbyshire village that spontaneously went into total lockdown without being asked in 1665. Eam. 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 Absolutely Eam. That's right. Um, and third, neurologist Oliver Sacks, who um, his colleagues cruelly joke is the man who mistook his patients for a book contract, will long be associated with the book and a film Awakening, linked to what epidemic? It was, par it was Parkinson's. Uh, uh, we're surgeons. You know. Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> okay, all right. Because you're surgeons, then I might let you have that then, and you're behind. Uh, encephalitis lethargica, which may or may not be linked to a Spanish flu, but no one's quite sure. All right, we'll let, we'll let them have that, okay? Now, obviously, you know that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is a doctor. However, he based the character on which Edinburgh surgeon? Anantha Christian. Bell, yes, Joseph Bell, well done. Okay, so we've got three questions on Sherlock Holmes. Number one, Dr. Watson, which London teaching hospital, according to the, to the texts, in fact, it's a sign of four, I think, did he qualify? Remember, it would have been in the 1840s. St. Bartholomew's? Bart? Yes, he was at Bart's, okay. He was an army doctor, finished his training after Bart's down at Netley. He was invalided out to the army following which campaign? I'll accept various different synonyms for it. Afghanistan? I'm sorry? Afghanistan? Yes, yes, the second Afghan war, very good. Battle of Maiwand. And Maiwand I've been to is on the main Kandahar road to Lashkagar, so lots of British soldiers have been there. What's the link between Sherlock Holmes and the actor who got a blue robe for Cambridge in 1980? Best mates of Stephen Fry. Uh, uh, we, yeah. we think Hugh Laurie might have played Sherlock Holmes. No, no, afraid not. You know? Okay, well, he's the character House. Obviously, he's modelled on Sherlock Holmes. That's why they called it House for Holmes. So. Okay, another start of a ten. Name the inquiry. Dame Janet Smith has chaired many inquiries. Named one. Good acre. Shipman? Yes, Shipman. Mm -hmm. The other one was Jimmy Savile. Okay, yeah. So, okay, through, not quite neck and neck. Three questions on inquiries. Mm -hmm. Bristol Heart Inquiry had a major impact on whistleblowing, surgical audit, and the career of Phil Hammond. Who chaired the Bristol Heart Inquiry? Ken Kennedy. 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 Ian Kennedy, yep. Um, the Bishop of Norwich led the inquiry into which rogue surgeon? I'm glad you're doing this one. Patterson. <laughs> I thought you'd know that one. Who chaired the independent review of the Mental Health Act? Dame Jane Dacre? No, it was me. <laughs> 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 so, 
So you're all disqualified. <laughs> Can we call you Jane? <laughs> and you call me Jane, yes. I'm progress all right, okay. Starter. On March the 4th, 2018, what did Alexandra Petrov and Ruslan Bashirov allegedly take with them on their sightseeing visit to an English cathedral city? Goddard. Okay, who, who won that one? Okay. Uh, Novichok. Novichok, yes. Right, three more, three more poisons. So, what was injected into the hip of uh, the leg by an umbrella of Georgi Markov when he was walking across Waterloo Bridge in 1978? Ricin. Yep. What did Andrei Lugovoy and Dmitry Kovatun allegedly, allegedly, they've got an international arrest warrant to get them anyway, supposed to say allegedly, uh, take with them to a meeting in a sushi bar and the bar of the Millennium Hotel in Mayfair in November 2006. Polonium. What did they take with them? Polonium. Yeah, Polonium. Yeah, 210. What did Prince Felix Yusupov and Grand Duke Dmitry Pavlovich take with them to serve their guest on the night of December the 30th, 1916 at Yusupov's palace? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here they are. Yeah. Have to hurry cyanide. a bit. Cyanide. cyanide. Yes, very yeah. good. Tea and cakes laced with cyanide. And who, is, who are they poisoning? Is it no? It was with Rasputin. 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 Yeah. Yeah, Rasputin. Yeah. He failed. They had to shoot him in the end because he was immune to cyanide. Okay. Right, starter. Which hospital do sick wizards attend in Harry Potter? Adebayo. That was Oliver. St. Moggles. Sorry, say again? St. St. Moggles, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, St. St. Mungo's Hospital for Magical Maladies and Injuries. I'll take that. Okay, three more Harry Potter, Potter questions for you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you need your kids here, don't you? What is the name? In fact, my kids gave me these. <laughs> what is the name of the school nurse at Hogwarts? Madam Pomfrey. Good, good. Okay, you get that. What medical condition affected Harry Potter's third year defence against the dark arts? No, he was a werewolf, so it's lycanthropy. And now, Oliver, you should get this. What potion regrows the bones in Harry's arms in his second year? Oh, <laughs> what's it called? Hermione makes it. I just, I can't remember what it's called. Okay, Skelly Grow. Skelly Grow. Oh, oh, I should know that. that. <laughs> All right, another starter. We're going to do a pitch around. The first person who knows what instrument this is when it appears on our mystery display board. Good day, Surgeons. It's a mouth gag. Yes, well done. Uh, steel mouth bag, okay. So, now then, Surgeons, you're gonna get three more instruments, so good job you won this one, isn't it? So just, just identify what you're looking at. Pocket They're all old instruments, I should immediately make it clear. Magnifying, a magnifying glass? A yes, pocket microscope. Oh, microscope. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. next. What's that? Late 19th century. Yeah. I'm not expecting you to be using this, by the way. <laughs> well, it's clearly some kind of syringe for washing something out. And oh, all right, okay, it's an aspirating set, so... Oh. Yeah. Okay. okay, you yeah. just basically described what you could see, didn't you? But that's fair enough, not so worried. And number four? You're very kind. Yeah. <laughs> number four, what's that? Well, that's an, uh, it's, uh, what's that not? It's that's a, a trepanning set, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. but, it, but is, it, is it a, a, a military surgeon's trepanning Military set? surgeon or trepanning yeah. set? Yeah. Quick. A military, yeah. a, 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 a military or trepanning surgeon. A trepanning thing, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's a trepanning set. All right, starter. What surname is shared by... An actress called Shirley, a criminal called Conrad, a surgeon called John, and a physician called Carol. Goddard. Black. Yeah, that's right. So the actress called Shirley, Shirley Temple Black. That was the name she used. Aha, because you were going to buzz early there, weren't you? And then you lost points, but you haven't, so well done. Right, so we're going to have questions now on Secretaries of State for Health, OK? So Marie von Britton Brown is a name you won't be familiar with. She invented the CCTV system. Which Secretary of State for Health wishes she hadn't? Come on. <laughs> Matt Hancock. Yes, of course. All right. Uh, which Secretary of State for Agriculture fed his daughter a hamburger in front of TV cameras? Oh, Mella. No. no. Oh. <laughs> John Selwyn Gummer. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Gummer. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. And finally, 
which Secretary of State, when told by the Prime Minister Tony Blair that he was going to health, said, oh, f not health. Uh, Dobson. Frank Dobson. Dobson. No, no, oh. That, oh, I've forgotten. No, it was John Reed. It was John Reed. Which surname is shared by a critic called Raymond, a classical guitarist called John, a surgeon called Norman, a physician called Roger, a singer called Robbie, and a playwright called Tennessee? Goddard. Oh, you took your time there, didn't you? Williams. Yes, well done. Yeah, Norman Williams, Robbie Williams, uh, Roger Williams, and so on. So, want three, three questions now on COVID villains or COVID idiots. OK, so question number one. At the start of the pandemic, why or what reasons did Novak or Novak Djokovic, as he's now known, give for not, re not wanting to be vaccinated or not needing to be vaccinated because he was doing what? I'll take any one of six possible answers. At the beginning of the pandemic. At the beginning of the pandemic, why did he say he didn't need to be vaccinated? Yeah. For taking ice baths? No, that's not one of them. So, OK, actually, they were drinking green shakes warm lemon water with sea zinc, whatever that is, C, uh, garlic cloves, colloidal silver water, zinc and vitamin. The other one was sea salt. Okay. Second, what did Rees Mogg, Jacob Rees Mogg, say, that, uh, say why Tory MPs didn't need to wear masks in the House of Commons? What reason did he give? They knew each other. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they all knew each other. Yes, already. they were yeah. all good friends. Yes. So they didn't wear the masks, yep. And what remedies did Donald Trump endorse? Name one. Bleach. Yeah. Bleach? Yep, bleach will do. And UV light or just very bright light. Right, now we're going to have a quick round of doctor doctor jokes, okay? So you'll get the point if you're anywhere close to the answers given in the Beano book of doctor doctor jokes, okay? <laughs> so I say doctor doctor, I've got strawberry on my bum, and you say I've got some cream for that, all right? That's the warm up. Okay, off we go. Your starter. Doctor, doctor, I feel like a pair of curtains. Oh, dog. Pull yourself together. Yeah, very good. OK. Quickly, three more then. Doctor, doctor, I feel like a pack of cards. I'll deal with you in a minute. Yeah, very good. Doctor, doctor, I have a letter stuck up my bum. No, nope. <laughs> no. Nope. It's just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, oh I know. <laughs> doctor, there's a patient. Uh, doctor, there's a patient in the waiting room who says he's invisible. Uh, next patient, please. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Is it next patient? No. Please? No, I'm not taking that. It's tell him I can't see him right now. Oh. I can't see him now. We have to take it. That is the Beano. They are, they are the, the BNF for Dr. Dr. Jokes on that one. OK. Music round. You're going to hear a sound effect. What is it? Good acre. MRI scanner. Very good. An MRI scan. OK, so... Which producer and artist got his name from wearing a doctor's mask during his performance with world-class wrecking crew in South Central LA? It's, um... Basically, he's Dr. the only J? modern world superstar we could find with doctor in his name. Dr. J? Dr. Drew? Dr. Drew? Dr. Drew? It's not... Sure? It, it, I, I don't think it is, actually. Okay, who else is doing that? Dr. John. Dr. 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 J? Yes, Dr. Dre. I'm going to say this is for the young people watching, obviously. Yes. <laughs> OK, all right. Which doctor gave us the immortal lyrics, ooh ee, ooh ah ah, ting tang, walla big bang? No. OK, no, that's the, um, the witch doctor, apparently. David Seville. And which doctor, currently very much in the limelight, rose to fame with the Underground song? Or London Underground, sometimes called. Played by Ben Wishaw as we speak. Oh. Uh, Dr. Adam K. Yeah, Dr. Adam K. Yeah. Going to do journeys, OK? Interrupt when you've got the journey. What starts in Chicago, then St. Louis, Joplin, Missouri, Oklahoma City, looks so pretty, Amarillo, New Mexico, Flagstaff, Arizona, don't forget Winona, Kingman, Barstow, San Bernardino, and ends in LA. Marty. Who was the winner? Farah. Route 66. Route 66, very good, yeah. Still with the Great American Songbook. Together with the singer, who um, in Baton Rouge thumbed a diesel down just before it rained and rode us all the way to New Orleans. No. It rings a bell. No, it's me and Bobby McGee, Chris, Chris Christopherson's song. Who rode from Charleston to Lexington to announce that the British are coming? Paul, 1775. Paul, Paul Revere. Paul Revere, very good. 
And finally, in 2020, Harry and Meghan uh, be be began their American journey and ended up as the new neighbours of Opera Winfrey in which town? Montecito. Yes. So the, we've now finished. So we have to do, we'll have to do the bong, right? Is that right? Okay. Excellent. So well done, surgeons, 145. Normally that would have been a winning score against most of the universities that compete. But the winners is the Royal College of Physicians with 170. So we'll be seeing you in the next round, if there was one. <laughs> Uh, which perhaps there will be. And so thank you all for taking part. I hope everyone's been reasonably entertained in, uh, in these particularly hard times that we're in at the moment. Thank you.